Aloha, and welcome to Chappie's Tiki Bar. This is episode number 11, where we're going back to Hawaii. Uh, this episode, I'm going to make a blue Hawaii cocktail. Uh, we're going to get best tropical destination stories. We're going to go check out the Park Shore Waikiki Hotel. Uh, then Muki has another special announcement. Uh, then I'm going for breakfast in Waikiki. I'm going to have an Asahi bowl. And then I'm going to make two kinds of ribs. And then we're going back to Helena's in Honolulu. And then we're going to go check out Roy's in Waikiki. And then I'm going to try to recreate uh, the dish right there at Roy's in Waikiki. All right here, coming up on Chappie's Tiki Bar. Welcome to episode number 11 of Chappie's Tiki Bar. This is Mookie, I'm Chappie, and this is my bar. This is the going back to Hawaii episode of Chappie's Tiki Bar. So in honor of Hawaii, I'm going to make a blue Hawaii cocktail. So first off, I got my martini shaker. I'm going to add some ice. Steady, Mookie, steady. Don't be... Jumpy, don't be jumpy. All right, so a blue Hawaii cocktail. Um, I'm going to go with three ounces of pineapple juice. I have some sweet and sour mix. I have one shot of blue curacao. One ounce of vodka. And one ounce of white rum, preferably light white rum. All right, we're going to give that a shake. Into the glass it goes. And I have a pineapple garnish. That's the Blue Hawaii. All right, now we're going to get Muki to summon the tiki drums for my best tropical destination story. Uh, this week we're going all the way to the Mediterranean for my best tropical destination story. All right, Muki, go summon the tiki drums. Thanks for uh, summoning those tiki drums, Vicky. So uh, this is another edition of Best Tropical Destination Stories. Um, this one comes to you from, once again, yours truly. Um, so this is back when um, I was working on the cruise ships. Uh, we were doing the uh, Mediterranean run. So I was working on the Grand Princess. Uh, we were going back and forth from Barcelona, Spain to Venice, Italy. Uh, and one of the stops was in Istanbul, Turkey. So my cabin mate Richard from England and I went out to hit a few pubs in Istanbul. Uh, we befriended an American up at the bar. He was uh, teaching English in Istanbul. Uh, he had a lot of stories and it seemed like he enjoyed getting into the odd a barroom brawl. Um, he explained to us a lot of these places were like clip joints. Uh, so in Istanbul, they would uh, let the tourists uh, run up big bar tabs and not tell them the price of the drink. And, and then uh, at the end of the night, they hit you with a ridiculously inflated bill. Uh, he said, however, he had a loophole to this. Uh, he, w he wasn't worried uh, because his solution would be at the end of the night, he would just uh, fight the bouncers in a fist fight for the price of the tab. Um, well, sure enough, at the end of the uh, evening, the bill came. Uh, it said 13 million lira. I'm not ex exactly sure what the exchange rate was back then, but 13 million seemed a little bit high for me. 
So this American English teacher uh, says, don't worry, boys, I got this. And he uh, grabs the bill out of my hand and he goes uh, behind the bar. I didn't really see what he was saying, but he was uh, poking the bartender in the chest. But then he came back to us and said, okay, boys, follow, follow me, it's on. Um, so we started heading straight for the back door uh, to the alley and he was followed by three large doormen. Um, I looked at Richard and said, hey Richard, you want to go for a kebab? And he said, yeah, uh, why not? I'm not exactly uh, married to this guy. Um, so we just walked out the front door without paying and um, went for a kebab several blocks away as I assume this guy was uh, getting the uh, daylights beaten out of him. Uh, so that is my Mediterranean best tropical destination story. Um, if you have any good uh, tropical destination stories that you'd like to share, uh, just email them to me at chappinesstikibar at yahoo.com and I'll uh, read them on one of my upcoming episodes. So um, next up, through the magic of YouTube, we're going to head back to Hawaii. So uh, this is a shot from my, the balcony of my hotel. Um, across the street there is uh, the Honolulu Zoo, and just down from that is the Kapuani Regional Park. Uh, so this is the Park Shore Waikiki Hotel, also located close to the Waikiki Aquarium. The pool, uh, the pool was excellent. It was nice and quiet. Lots of uh, room for sun tanning, and they provided some uh, flotational devices and toys. So the location is 2586 Kalakua Avenue in Honolulu, Hawaii, just overlooking Waikiki Beach, as you can see. Um, they had rooms with partial ocean views, full ocean views, and park views. I would highly recommend uh, an ocean view. In the beach right out in front, uh, they had sort of like a seawall uh, to pre prevent the waves from uh, crashing down on you, so there is a bit of protection there. And then you can see they had that uh, giant pier there where you could go walk out. Uh, you watched episode number one, um, that's where I spotted the banana hammock on that exact pier. So this was uh, filmed around dusk, the sun had already uh, gone down. Um, every night I went uh, back to my balcony and uh, watched the sunset and had a beverage on my balcony. Uh, I really enjoyed that time of day in Hawaii. And this, this is actually not a postcard, it was a photo I took. So on the website, uh, Park Shore Waikiki says it's set on the diamond head side of vibrant Waikiki. Our hotel offers you the perfect balance of serenity and ambiance. Enjoy, enjoy the ideal location just steps from the beach, park, and great shopping, dining, and entertainment. So um, Waikiki Beach was actually pretty busy. Uh, there was a public beach where the locals went to, which was a few miles north of here. It was Ala Moana Beach. Um, if you wanted to go to a bit quieter beach, I'd go to Ala Moana Beach. And uh, they have the giant uh, shopping mall right across uh, from Ala Moana Beach, which is the Ala Moana Mall. Uh, which I also featured in episode number one. So coming up next, uh, I have a special announcement from Mookie. And stay tuned for that. How's it going? Mookie here. 
have another small announcement to make. I've decided to become the world's first bubble dog. You see this empty water tank over here? I'm going to squeeze in it, and I'm not coming out till this germ stuff is over with. I'm not coming out until August or Trump says it's okay, whichever comes first. The idea came to me the other night when we were watching Seinfeld. Costanza gets in a fight with a bubble boy over Trivial Pursuit. The moops. What a jerk. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to squeeze my butt in there and I'm not coming out till it's safe. Now some of the pros of being a bubble dog, I can give Chappie a pressed ham whenever I want. I just press my butt against the side and he has to look up my address. <laughs> now uh, a con to being a bubble dog. I haven't quite yet figured out the bathroom situation as of yet. Uh, previously, I'd just go on the bathroom mat upstairs, even though I've been told countless times it's not cool to go on the bathroom mat upstairs. I see everyone else has used that room to go. Screw them. Why can't I go? I'm like Rosa Parks of dogs and toilets. <laughs> so this uh, next clip, uh, it's just Chappie walking around Honolulu looking for breakfast. But first... I'm going to leave you with a little song that I wrote. I'm the dog in the bubble. I'm the dog in the bubble. I ain't looking for no trouble. I'm a dog in a bubble. I'm a dog in a bubble. And Chappie has a fat head like Bonnie Rubble. Yeah, I live in a bubble. Yeah.
Okay, today I'm making uh, two kinds of ribs. So I got these uh, beef short ribs. Uh, it's uh, called a flanken cut. Uh, they're, they're the same uh, that they use for Korean ribs. And they're, they're the uh, ribs that um, I had at Helena's in Hawaii that I talked about in episode one. Um, that place was amazing. I, I'll never be able to duplicate that. They actually aged their ribs there. They when when they brought the ribs, they actually brought um, some Maui onions and Hawaiian sea salt, and I didn't think really anything of it. But they told me to uh, try it with the ribs to enhance the flavor, um, I, and it was unbelievable. Um, so I'm I'm curious what the uh, Maui onions and the uh, sea salt had to do with enhancing the flavor. So I'm gonna ask my Google assistant to see if they know. Google, why do beef short ribs taste so good with Maui onions and Hawaiian sea salt? According to Understanden, the meat has a very rich flavor that is enhanced by the Hawaiian sea salt. The Maui onion provides a sweet and pungent contrast to the beef. The combination of these flavors makes the beef flavor explode in your mouth. And then actually underneath this, there's an article about Helena's. So they are famous for their uh, short ribs. And the, the article is how to eat Pipikua ribs at Helena's Hawaiian food. And it goes on and on. Um, it says a, this is a no nonsense local foodie restaurant. The only way to get this kind of authenticity is if you are eating at your Hawaiian auntie's house. Oh, so, uh, and then it says, if you go there during peak hours, you should expect to wait for a table. Be patient. It is beyond worth the wait. All right. So, yeah, again, I'm, I'm not going to be able to uh, duplicate it. But um, what I do for my beef short ribs is I do a uh, yakitori marinade. So the yakitori is just the little uh, chicken skewers that you put on the hibachi. Um, and in Japan, they have all these great yakitori bars where you just sit around and eat the chicken skewers. So I, I have a mar marinade uh, recipe for that, but I'm going to put it on my beef ribs. So I'll uh, do my yakitori marinade for my beef short ribs. I'm going to start with little brown sugar and then I got uh, Japanese sake like a, a rice wine and uh, so there's basically just the three liquids I'm just gonna do equal parts I probably do about a half a cup each and then uh, soy sauce And then the final ingredient is mirin. Um, so it it's, uh, says it's a su uh, sweet style uh, cooking seasoning. So, uh, that, and it's, again, it's Japanese mirin. So that's my um, marinade. I'm going to put it in the, the beef short ribs in the Ziploc bag, let it marinate overnight. Uh, you don't want to let it marinate too long. Sometimes the uh, soy sauce and stuff will break it down. And then I also have uh, some pork ribs. And I'm going to do uh, Chinese barbecue char siu. Um, so this is just a packet that I bought in, at TNT or you can get it at any Asian grocery store. Um, so I'm just going to mix this with a half cup of water. Here the packet so it actually uh it says foods of hawaii and it says uh taste the flavor of hawaii on there i don't know if you can see that so it's a but it's a chinese uh char siu uh marinade uh but it, i guess it's a sort of popular in hawaii so it's a, so we're keeping with the hawaiian theme so again i'm just gonna put it in a cup of water and 
And with this, you don't have to marinate it as long. Um, and, and then if you can't find uh, the char siu mix, um, you can make your own. Just use any kind of Asian flavors like soy sauce, garlic, ginger. Um, but I would add red food coloring because uh, this, this is going to color it red or pink. And for some reason, when it's uh, that pink or bright red color, it just tastes better. I don't know. So I'm going to mix this up, marinate my uh, short ribs in the char siu, and then I'm going to marinate my beef ribs in my yakitori marinade that I just made. And then we're just going to th uh, throw it on the grill. So this nondescript building that's in a strip mall that looks like a crappy grocery store is actually a James Beard award-winning restaurant, 1240 North School Street. As I mentioned in episode one, it's very close to the Costco if you're in the area. Definitely got to check it out. That's Helena's in Honolulu, Hawaii. So I'm just uh, showing you again with that char siu uh, marinade. It's just the powder and the water. And you get that uh, red dye in there that's going to color those uh, pork ribs nicely. So just uh, make sure you stir it up good. And the pork ribs, I, I got their um, cut kind of like you, you would get like uh, in a Chinese food restaurant. Um, they're, they're, uh, the width is not very long. Uh, they're nice meaty ribs though. And in goes the marinade. So that uh, with the char siu marinade, um, an hour will do. Uh, the yakitori um, I did over at night. So in goes the marinade. Going to marinate it for an hour. And off to the grill it goes after an hour. So there they are on the grill. I got the beef and the pork. Um, the beef's gonna go a little long or a little shorter than the pork. Um, you want to make sure the pork's definitely cooked all the way through. Um, the beef short ribs actually cook very fast. And I'm adding a little bit of garlic salt to the char siu. So these uh, ribs are uh, nice and juicy and succulent. Uh, with the char siu pork ribs, I'm going to cut them up into individual ribs. Um, so that there they are. Just delicious. I think I'll uh, chow down using my hands. Uh, then, of course, I got the uh, Japanese sticky rice. Uh, that's the brand I always use. It's uh, excellent rice and an excellent compliment. So the next day, uh, I had to use leftovers. I made short rib street tacos. And then, the day after that, I still had short ribs. So I made more tacos. Uh, these, uh, I used flour tortilla and some jalapeno and lime. And they were quite delicious. So next up, I'm going to Roy's Restaurant back in Honolulu, Hawaii. So there's Roy's in Waikiki Beach. Uh, it's located 226 Lures Street, Waikiki, Hawaii. Uh, I was very, actually very close to where I had breakfast and that uh, lovely Asahi bowl. Uh, so it's owned by Roy Yamaguchi. Big fan of Roy Yamaguchi. Uh, he's had a couple uh, cooking shows where he, it was a uh, Hawaiian cooking. So that's the meal I had. It was a shellfish orzo mac and cheese with Kono lobster jumbo shrimp wrapped in prosciutto and stuffed with blue crab tarragon. Uh, so I'm going to try to recreate that dish. It was just incredible. Um, just a yeah, great restaurant. I just sat at the bar. Super friendly. Highly recommend it. Uh, th that's the beverage I had. It was some kind of pineapple infused martini. Um, it's a lot of uh, 
micro greens on top so I was just trying to get, get a good look at the because uh, it was just like gorgeous lobster and, and giant uh, shrimp and crab meat there just trying to flick some of those uh, micro greens off the top so you can uh, see all the lovely shellfish I got there so I'm gonna try to recreate this dish. Uh, now they, they actually bought me dessert that was a macadamia uh, tort. I mean, that was quite nice as well. So uh, that's the orzo pasta. Um, it said mac and cheese but it had sort of a risotto feel. So I'm gonna use the two, actually three cheeses. I'm just making a bechamel there in slow motion. So bechamel uh, is just uh, one part butter, uh, one part flour. You kind of stir it up so it's a sand-like consistency. Then I'm gonna add some milk. And then I'm gonna add the three cheeses. Uh, I'm gonna keep the cheeses white uh, so it kind of looks like uh, what I had at Roy's. Uh, so that, yeah, that's after I added the milk. So it's like a thick uh, bech bechamel sauce there. Um, so I'm poaching off uh, the, the seafood in butter. Um, the prawns were a little bigger, so I'm going to boil the prawns. Um, so I'm just adding um, mascarpone cheese. That's like a really full fat cream cheese, Italian cream cheese. And then the other two cheeses I'm going to use is uh, fontina and mozzarella. Uh, so yeah, so that's the orzo. And mozzarella and fontina. So that is basically how you'd make a, a macaroni and cheese from scratch. And then, um, th so there's the crab legs, and then I got some nice uh, lobster meat from Costco. Th those are uh, mostly claws and knuckles, really good uh, loose lobster meat. And those are giant tiger prawns. So I'm gonna give the tiger prawns a little boil first, but then I'm gonna poach the uh, the crab and the lobster in the butter. So I'm just adding the, the giant uh, tiger prawns into the butter there. And then uh, more about uh, Roy, uh, so he uh, he's an innovator of Hawaiian inspired cuisine. He's won a James Beard Award for Best P Pacific Northwest Chef in 1993. So I'm just adding the lobster meat, and then I'm adding the cooked orzo pasta into my bechamel sauce, where I've already added the three cheeses, and that is my final product. So I, I just put the uh, sort of the mac and cheese or the pasta and cheese on the bottom. And then I had all this shellfish poached in butter. And I get, have a healthy uh, portion of butter swimming on the top there. Uh, and that turned out to be a really nice uh, New Year's dinner for my girlfriend and my parents. Thanks for watching episode number 11 of Chappie's Tiki Bar. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up or a like. And make sure you subscribe down below. I'm going to leave you with a quote from Dale Gribble from King of the Hill. It goes, Ah, oh, sure, I've been abducted. Heck, we've all been abducted. The trick is to keep them from reading your thoughts. I wear a hat and remain thoughtless at all times. So this is Mookie. And Chappie saying stay home, stay safe, and we'll see you next time on Chappie's Tiki Bar.